Well, we spent some time just getting a, a small snapshot of some of the students that, that we're privileged to, to, to serve. And, and really, you know, you know we're, we, we could be here for a long time. We, we could have students, student after student after student, from year after year after year of this ministry, uh, sharing from different experiences that they've had in different ways that they are seeing the kingdom of God advance and seeing God's impact in this world grow. That's, that's why we do what we do. That's why we exist as an institution. We, this institution started back in 1935 in a little community of, of Star City, Saskatchewan, and then relocated here to Saskatoon, and it did two or three moves. So it's, we're not the first time to, to move, you know. For those of you who are angsty about our move, just saying, it, it's happened before. Um, <laughs> But, but that's be, the reason that we could move is because, is because we were so confident that why we existed wasn't where we existed. And so we knew that why we existed was to see the kingdom of God advance. And what we got to see tonight is we got to see some of the students who are here, but we could have spent time. We could have, we could have called in people from, for Kelly from, from Bolivia, could have called in where she's been serving faithfully as, as a missionary. We, we could be looking around this room as I do, and I see some, not, not pointing at any tables, but some tables where there is a more ministry and faithfulness to God that has taken place than I've, than I've lived. And I'm so grateful for that. Yeah, that's, that deserves a hand. There's, there's people in this room right now we could draw attention to. I see Dallas and Leah. There's 20, 20 years at The Rock now? 27 years at The Rock now? You're looking good. Uh, <laughs> and, and Brandon and Jessica have joined you there. And, and uh, student, the, impact, the impact continues to, to grow. And, and, and it takes different shapes. And it looks different depending on on who is being called in, into what. And what I want us to just shift to a little bit is, is we, I think we all get the why. If you're in this room, you probably share some of the why. You share that passion for seeing Jesus and his kingdom grow. I want to just think a little bit about, about the how. And so I'll, I'll ask you, and you, you can raise your hands, did any of you arrive here tonight in a vehicle? <laughs> Did any of you not arrive here in a vehicle? It's a Saskatchewan. You all arrived here in a vehicle. Now, how did, your, how did your vehicle get here? There is a basic technology that is at work that was invented. This is a, a transformative technology that took place. The wheel. But the wheel in itself isn't actually what got you here because the technology that took place, wheels, wheels vary in size. And we're living in Saskatchewan and Harvest, right? Like, there's some big wheels out there. But it's not actually the wheel that moves the vehicle. The, the technology that moves the vehicle is the hub. You have a hub that allows the wheel to rotate and wheels of various sizes. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff too. We won't get into all picking that all apart. But, but the concept of a hub, and it's a hub, this, this is an invention that goes back thousands of years. You even read about it in the Bible, all those chariots of the Egyptians and they're chasing the, the Israelites in the desert and the wheels came off. You know, the hub, the hub is what allowed something to transport. It allowed the wheel to actually function in, in a way. And, and what we're here to do tonight, we're here to talk about our, we're, we're here to talk about our grand opening, but really, uh, the grand opening is, is really just a different place to do the same mission that we've been doing since 1935. But some of the vision 
that we've got in how we go about doing that, some of that has been refined over the year. And so I want to talk to you a, a little bit about a hub. Uh, those of you who've been tracking with us for a few years, you've seen that, that our organization has, has shifted a little bit. In 2015, we took a very hard look at ourselves as a Christian higher education institution, and we asked the hard question is, are we doing as well as we can do? And, and we listened to some really hard answers, not just to us, but to the entire industry that we represent. And there are long-standing criticisms that say, you know, when I went to Bible college or seminary, I had a really good time. I really grew personally in my life with Jesus. I grew really close. I made some of the closest friends I've ever made in my life, and they sit at tables together years later. Sometimes I even met my spouse, not a guarantee. But I wasn't actually prepared for, for ministry. There are certain aspects of it I wasn't prepared for. And so we, we, we heard that criticism, we listened to it, and we consulted with ministry leaders and practitioners, and we brought them in and we said, tell us, what is it that you're looking for when you want to hire someone into your ministry? And we revamped our entire curriculum based on those inputs, and we, we launched a competency-based approach to education, the first in, in Canada. And, and that was 2015, but... But we didn't sit still very long. By 2016, we were pushing a little bit in some new directions. So we started in 1935, and by 1937, we were adopted by the, the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada, Saskatchewan. And in 1962, Manitoba North, Northwestern Ontario Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada kind of adopted us. By 2016, we said, we are feeling the vision that we need to go bigger. We need to go broader. And, and so we started conversations. And these conversations led to relationships. It's kind of like dating, you know. And eventually, eventually that, those relationships grew. And we, between, between 2017, 2016 to 2018, we, we signed agreements and we became partners with the Church of God in Western Canada, with the Christian and Missionary Alliance, the Midwest District, with the, with the Saskatchewan Mennonite Brethren Churches. All these are here today. Now we're, now we're with the talking with the redeemed Christian Church of God, and we're seeing God's kingdom grow and expand as those relationships continue to, continue to grow. And then came another vision. And then, in, so in 2018, we really looked closely at our beloved facility over on Jackson Avenue, and we said, we know why is this where? As we walked through that facility with all its sentimentality, and as I in my role walked through that facility and saw the asbestos and <laughs> the failing electrical and the leaking roof and the HVAC unit that went, we asked, why is our why limited to this where? And we said, no, and the Lord, the Lord led us in a new direction. And you were at our last fundraising banquet, which is like two and a half years ago, so you've probably forgotten. I'll just share this, this brief, a brief version of this again, but, but we, we, were, we were looking at our, at our where, and we thought, you know, this is Saskatoon, this property's worth something, so, so surely, surely some lending institutions are going to want to uh, let us use the equity on this so that we can advance these great plans for God that we have, and of of course they all would, right? Well, actually, you'll be surprised that a nonprofit religious educational institution is not really considered a highly bankable asset for, by, by banks and credit unions. Really, no, it, you can take my word for it. So, so despite our best laid plans, we found, you know what? We actually can't get any traction. So, so our property had a value on paper that in real life didn't really amount to more than the piece of paper that it was written on. And I was lamenting this um, with Bruce Enns, who was the pastor of Forest Grove Church, and we were at Starbucks over in the corner and just saying, look, you know, this is a problem. And, and Bruce said, you should come and pitch your vision of this multi-denominational um, idea. You pitch this, come pitch this to our green space committee that has this green space over here, you know, next to Forest Grove Church. So we did this, and I, I still remember Don was the vice chair of this. Because 
because Don broke my heart. So, um, <laughs> so, so we went, we did this pitch, and I, I thought it was a pretty good pitch. You know, we put together, we had nice, you know, like we had like booklets and pictures and, you know, it looked, it looked good. We had our team, we did this. And uh, it was, you know, pitched the passion right out of myself. And Don was the first one. He says, this is great vision. I really like what you're saying here. There's a good vision. Why are you telling us? <laughs> so we, we, we don't, because I said, you know, we're going to do all this great, and, and you guys, you guys could have this building here, and you could build this, and we'll be your number one tenant, and do ministry. God will be pleased. Don said, that's not what we want to do. So, so then it went on from there, and he said, you know, what would be great is if you had a, you know, if you had an investor who wanted to come along and build you a nice building, and do all that good stuff. That'd be great. You can come back and talk to us, but, you know, good luck with your vision. And, uh, and, and so, and I, I honestly left that meeting and my staff, because I, I was actually in shock because leading up to that meeting, I actually said to a colleague, and I'm actually quite cautious about saying this, I actually said, if I have ever heard the voice of God before, this is what is going to happen. And then Don broke my heart. <laughs> And I had to question even my capacity to hear God speak. <laughs> Sent me into theological crisis for two days. And I was in shock. And I, like, I actually was in real shock. Like, I was in a daze. Because I was like, I really don't know. Like, that was it. Like, I don't have a plan B. So, so I, I'm sitting, and, and, and my father uh, gave me a call, and he's always interested in what we're up to, and he Oh, how did your meeting at that church go? I said, well, you know, it didn't go quite the way that we thought it was going to go. And, uh, and then he called me back a couple of days later, and he, and he says, you know, I, I should talk to this, this friend of mine out in Saskatchewan. And, and too long for it to be a long story short. But anyway, getting to the point, uh, he, he calls up and, and, and he says his, his friend, his, his friend um, and, uh, and uh, he said, well, you know, we're going to set something up and... and and so I met, I met with me, and, and I shared my whole vision, and he didn't break my heart, Don. Uh, he, said, he said, I said, look, could you want to you wanna buy our property and buy this property over at, uh, next to Forest Grove and build us a new building and let us keep all the equity out of our property? Hey, how's that sound? And he said, yeah, I think we can do that. And he did. We're here tonight because, because he did. And, and that's, that's, that's part of what we're here to celebrate. But, but what really we're here to celebrate, what, what really captured Josh's interest when we shared was when we said, we want to bring together these different denominational groups. And we want to be a hub, a ministry hub on the prairies. We want to be able to bring together a group that has a central hub out of which multiple ministries can grow. And that concept of a hub is what has driven us. The, the Oxford English Dictionary gives this, I, you know, and I picked and choose. I tell my students, don't do this with Bibles, but you don't pick and choose your translations. But I like this, this portion of a definition out of Oxford using a figurative use of the word hub is a central point of revolution. A central point of revolution. And I think about the concept of a hub, and I can't help but think about the Bible. I can't help but think about this is God's design. God created humanity, and he says, you know, I need a witness for humanity. So he selected and created the languages. He created a people, Israel. He created them and said, through you, I'm going to reach all the whole world. And out of that people, God himself took on flesh, and then he called a people, and he created a people. He says, you're going to go out from here in a hub from Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. And you're going to reach this world. And Jesus had his, his hub. He had his little hub of, of Peter and James and John. And James became the first of the 12 that 
get martyred. So the hub didn't even stay intact. And then he, he had the 12, and he didn't do it you know, 100% there either because Judas decided to turn them in. But the hub functioned. There was a central point of revolution. And if Jesus did anything, the fact that we're here 2,000 years later after a preacher in the middle of nowhere started talking about the kingdom of God, and here we are in Saskatchewan, the middle of... Okay. Nowhere. 2,000 years later, Jesus started a revolution with a tiny, tiny, tiny hub. Because what the hub does is it allows the wheel to rotate and... Yeah, yeah, we can go on about the chassis and the axles and all the other stuff, all the auto guys are thinking. But, but the base concept of allowing something functionally to transport, to go, to go beyond what it itself is capable of, it's not just the rotation, it's not just the little hub that rotates. The little hub rotates something much larger than itself. And what we heard with all of our students and all the ministries and the impact they're doing they're like the tire. They're like the big wheel. And, and the reach of that wheel can be immense. But what makes it function is a little hub that rotates. And our vision here has really been, and I trust that we're being led by the Lord, our vision has really been to build a hub. And so we've built a hub in terms of the partnerships we have because we're on the prairies. We are in the middle of nowhere, in a sense. And the Saskatchewan Mennonite Brethren and the prairie-based PAOC and the prairie-based the Christian and Missionary Alliance and the Church of God in Western Canada, we're, we're small on our own. But we come together. The vision that we had we, to, to do a place like this was to bring us together, and we've been able to do things together. We're all here today, together. We rub shoulders. As you heard from Peyton's testimony, we even swap denominational kids, and they, but they come the other way too because it's about the kingdom. We create a space where the spokes can go out and expand beyond the size of, of the hub. Uh, there, was, there was a book that I read. It's not a Christian book, but I've read it about five times. And the concept of it is, is a hub. And I read this before COVID, so resilience. Uh, so that was handy. So, uh, but Andrew Zoli, so for those of you interested, but, he makes, he makes this comment, studying living systems and, and systems in, in social systems and other systems, that for resilient systems, for many resilient systems, there's a simple principle that you have a very simple core and a diversity at the edges. And that principle, it's really a hub. And that's something that's guided us in, in our decisions that we've made. So our, our move here, our partnering, the way that we do our programs, we have a, a base structure of program that now we've been able to expand with partnerships and, and signing agreements with places like Saskatchewan Polytechnic so that we can offer degrees like Grace is taking, but, but we don't have to supply all of the education to it. We supply, we supply what we do, and we do well, And the diversity at the edges, it allows for an infinite, infinite possibilities. And so what we're doing here tonight, what I'm hoping the, the vision that you'll catch tonight is a vision for the hub. The vision for that, that small place where revolution, the base of revolution, because if the hub is healthy, then really the size of the tire is beyond our imagination.